All right, Chris, here's the video I told you I was going to make on how to scale a map once you have imported it. Um, they've made it a little bit different than the old version 8 that we were playing on, but uh, this is a little bit easier. So um, hopefully you find this helpful. As always, ask me any questions and we'll go from there. So uh, this is a map that's probably the very first map that I found and downloaded way back when when I was testing this out and I've just kind of kept it hanging around because uh, it was a fun map just to you know, learn how to do different things. So uh, let's walk through how you scale it and I'll also give you some other pointers around how do you configure a scene. So if you, you can do it from a couple different places, if you go to your scenes tab um, under here, you can right click from here and you can pick the different uh, settings configure or when it's up here in your navigation, you can right click and click configure. Um, so the way this breaks down, you already know about importing the background image, right? So you can find that. We'll still have to think about where, why you can't see the assets, but we can take, tackle that later. Uh, one thing you may not, or that you can do is you can change the background color. So you can see around this, it's gray. Um, you could come in here and change it to any color that you want. Um, you know, black, blue, red, whatever. I'm going to leave it gray for the demo because it makes it easier to see the grid. Um, so let's move to the grid because as you can see, all right, and hopefully you can see this, is on the map, um, the gray lines, these large squares, are what is set uh, by Fort Foundry based off of, you know, default settings. You can see kind of, you know, it's a little bit hard on this map. It's not as clear as others, but the, the little grids that are uh, part of the map. So... The scale is definitely way off. It's it's too small for what we're trying to do. Um, and another way to test that is if you grab a character and drop it on the board, he's huge compared to it, right? So, so we know we've got to make scale this image up to be able to make it look and feel right. So how do you do that? Well, let's go back to configuration. Let's click on grid, which we're already there, and it's really playing with these image dimensions um, and you can play with the pick grid size um, so some mapping software you can modify the grid size when you're building a map uh, like for example dungeon fog i can pick it you know 50 70 100 whatever um, default tends to be 100 so we're going to keep that assumption and kind of play with it there now incarnate is it's 100 so if we made a map that was 30 by 30 Right, I'd have to scale the map to 3,000 by 3,000. So what does that mean? Well, what you want to do is start with understanding the size of your map. So this map is 25 by 25. It has 25 squares this way and 25 squares this way. So um, I went and counted each one. Um, so that's how I know it's 25 by 25, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So kind of using that and the grid size of 100, um, I'm going to actually change the scale of this map. Um, when we imp when I imported it, it was 960 by 960. I'm going to take 25, multiply it by 100, and make that 2500. And let's see what that does. Save changes. Yes. And bang. Now it looks like we're pretty close. Right? You can kind of see the gray line. You can kind of see the lines. It's not perfect. It's but it's pretty close and it maintains that as you scroll through the map, right? So even down here, you can see that it almost fits the box. It's not perfect, uh, but it's pretty dang close. You know, you can kind of see it getting a little bit more offset the further down the map we can go. Um, but as a starting point, I would start with there because then from there, if we go back to configuration, what we can do is click on the little square and notice that the background image scale is 2.6041, right? Use it, holding down the shift key, we can kind of tune this a little bit, or maybe we set the offset. The offset moves the map within the current grid, right? So if I wanted to maybe shift it around, I'm not sure how much you can see it. Um, all right, why is that not working? There we go, let's do this. Use the arrow keys, I am. There we go. All right, you can kind of use your arrow keys and maybe fine tune it a little bit and move things around this way until it comes a little bit closer. Um, you know, 
I'm gonna kind of leave it where it was. It seemed like it was okay. It was okay there. Or you can use shift. If you hold down the shift key in your mouse wheel, we can play with this value a little bit, right? So if I go down, I'm making the scale off. If I go back up, 2.6, 2.65, 2.6. All right, so you can kind of see that, you know, it's in that 2.6 range. Um, I'm gonna save it. And I'm actually gonna go back here and notice it changed it to 2496. So I'm gonna change that back to 2500 because that was actually a better alignment. So sometimes it's as close as you can get. But that's what I would do. I would use the number of grids uh, times 100. So again, this is a 25 by 25 map. So that's why I went with 2500. And it got us pretty close. And if I grab a character, drop it back on here and move them around, you know, it looks like, you know, when we put in our walls and doors, it looks like it's lining up pretty nice. Going through that door, going through that door. If I go up here and assuming that there's some doors up here, you know, he lines up pretty well moving through there. So I say that's pretty close. Um, sometimes that's all you're going to get is close enough. Um, if you know the exact, you know, pixels, if you know the exact things then it makes it a little bit easier because then you can play with that but that's what i would do i would take the grids um, and then multiply it by 100 and just set that size one other thing um, to look at is when you get a map and you download it to your local machine right um, we, it'll be an image on your machine i'm just going to pick the buried city uh, sometimes I have found, not all the time, but sometimes the dimensions are different when they import it. If you ever want to know the dimension of the map, what you want to do is right click onto the map so it brings up this menu. Now yours is probably going to look a little bit different, uh, but you're going to look for the properties section. And then under properties, go to details, and this also gives you its, you know, uh, its size. So, um, this also gives some horizontal resolution. I haven't played with that a lot, but let's go see what that does. So this says it's 96. Let's see if that changes anything. But I think the alignment is pretty good right now. But just for sake of doing this, configure. Uh, let's change this to 96. Uh, no, that's way off. All right, I'm going to leave it alone. But that's what I mean about it's kind of an art, is just play with these values until it feels like it's close enough. Um, so that's how I would scale a map, and hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you can, uh, you know, start to play with that. Obviously, any questions, let me know. Uh, but while I got you, let me give you a couple other pointers about what you can do from here. So um, back to the basics is uh, I'll show you what we mean by changing this background color. So if you click on that, I'm just going to say black. OK, now notice the frame around your map is in black. So again, this is a personal choice. I always like putting it black, but you could, you know, you can turn it, you know, dark blue if you wanted to, right? So it's all up to you. The other things that you can do is, let's see, under grid, you can change your grid color, right? So depending on how, what the scene is, or depending if you can see it or not, I could change the grid color to yellow, right? So now notice the yellow lines on the map versus the dark gray or the black. And this might be useful when you're scaling it because it makes it a little bit easier to see sometimes. So you can play with that. Uh, lighting is interesting. So just a few settings here. So token vision restricts the vis visibility uh, to control tokens. So notice I've got my world of Istrum up here. That does not have this box checked, which means you do not need, or the player does not need a token on that scene to be able to view it. Because if they navigated to a scene and this was set and that token wasn't on it it's the hey why can't i see this scene well that's because your token's not on it therefore you're limited to what you can see so this is just a nice way to do things like uh you know how i show the the world of istrum right so you don't need a token you can navigate to this tab anytime you want um, and take a look around at it i'm going to go back to the tavern and uh, fog exploration. So this tracks the progress. So um, you know when you're moving your token around, if I've cleared a space, and I'll show you if I 
that space will stay cleared because it's you know it, it, you've explored it so you can play with that so this means if it's unchecked when i move my token whatever the space i was in is going to go to black i'm not going to see it anymore unrestricted vision range just makes the whole map visible um, in lieu of walls you still have walls and things of that nature and then this is where you set your darkness level if this is a night scene hey i can turn i can make it dark i can make it bright i can put it in the middle of the day and then the vision um, threshold says i could have unrestricted vision range however if it gets dark let's say you know at 75 percent up until that point i have full vision range but once i pass that threshold now i'm going to be restricted to to what i can see based off of my uh you know darkness vision and all that fun stuff so again it's just a way to play with some of the settings around that uh one other thing on basics so when you import the scene it gets added here and you name it right so when you create a new scene you put in tavern or cave or whatever you can give it an alternate name so maybe you don't want us to know it's a cavern you just want to call it a, a secret hideout well what does that do when i hit save it changes it up here in the scene selector so um, just something else if you want to just uh, use that and then right click configure kind of goes through it the last is ambiance so here you can uh, associate things like sounds with the scene so you know how rob and i like to have some of that background music you can just associate it so when that scene becomes active it plays that and you can get and set some weather effects so if it's you know cold outside i can make it snow i can make it rain etc um so that's it so hopefully on the scaling um you found that helpful and as well as those other tips as always let me know if you have any questions and i'll be more than happy to answer them thank you have a good one